Hello, 10th graders. Welcome to week three, lesson 12. This is your favorite or second favorite virtual teacher, Mr. Benson. Let's get started with today's lesson. But first, the joke of the day. What is the difference between a teacher and a train? A teacher says, spit out that gum, and a train says, choo-choo. <laughs> So today, after you watch this video, week three, lesson 12, you're going to go back to civil piece. You've already done a first read with it and a close read, but now you're going to do more analysis. Um, you're gonna analyze author's attitude and choice of title. Um, and then when you go down to lesson 12, as always, you can remind yourself of the um, materials you need for today's lesson. The learning target for today is, I can cite strong and thorough textual evidence to support analysis of what the text says explicitly as well as inferences drawn from the text. So we'll go over this in a little bit, but your job today is to go back into the text, civil piece, and pull out some strong and thorough textual evidence that will support a deeper analysis of the text. Let's quickly go over the read, think, talk, write protocol for today. So for the read section, you're actually going to review your summary that you wrote yesterday and the close read annotations you completed in the margins of the text. And um, as a final step to the read, portion, you're going to reread paragraph one of the text. So actually reread it again, um, just to be able to complete the next part of the lesson. So for the think part today, um, in the first paragraph, you're going to focus on the five inestimable blessings, um, which were his head, his wife, Maria's head, and the heads of three out of their four children. And you have to basically think about the following question. What does Jonathan's attitude toward these blessings show you about the nature of the Nigerian civil war? and you're going to capture your thoughts in the note catcher. So you have to think about, um, of the, the blessings he listed in paragraph one, what does um, his attitude towards these blessings show you about the nature of the Nigerian civil war as a whole? For the talk part, you're going to engage with a family member, caregiver, or friend, um, and you're going to compare and contrast the character's reactions throughout the story. Um, but in your discussion, specifically talk about the following question. How is Jonathan's reaction to the loss of the egg rasher different from that of the man robbed at the treasury. So remember the egg rasher is the money that people received um, for turning in the, the old rebel money. So um, you have to compare and contrast Jonathan's reaction to the loss of um, his egg rasher to the, um, the man's loss at the treasury when that man was robbed of his egg rasher. Then you're gonna write in your note catcher uh, a response to the following question. Why do you think the author chooses the term civil peace as the story's title? Explain your reasoning using details from the story. So think about both those words and what they mean and what they may mean together. And then think about key details from the story that would help you draft an answer um, to this question of why that may be the story's title. And then like always, you're gonna close out by sharing your writing with someone. And then you're gonna read a book for 20 minutes and you're gonna document your reading of that book in the reading log. I know this goes without saying, but don't forget to complete your note catcher. So the model today is on the read and think part of the lesson. Just a quick reminder, the read part, um, you should review the summary of the story that you wrote, as well as your close read annotations. And then you should reread paragraph one of the text because paragraph one will help you with uh, the question and the think part. So in the think part, you have to really focus on the five inestimable blessings from paragraph one. And you have to answer the question, what does Jonathan's attitude toward these blessings show you about the nature of the, of the Nigerian civil war? And you'll write your answer in the note catcher. Now, um, there's two parts of that question. And if I answered both parts of the question for you, I'd basically be giving you the answer. And um, that would defeat the purpose of, of this virtual learning because like you are supposed to engage in the learning yourself. But I do wanna support you in setting up um, you to be successful to actually answer the question in full. So I think about the question, I know that there's like two parts to it. And the first part is you actually have to identify Jonathan's attitude towards these five blessings before you can figure out um, like what it shows about the nature of the Nigerian civil war. So today I'm going to help you with that part, support you in that part of identifying Jonathan's attitudes, attitude towards these blessings. Now, um, I have the background paragraph listed here because I think it's important just to go through that again and just remind ourselves of like what happened in the Nigerian Civil War because we can't really talk about Jonathan's attitude towards the war if we don't actually remember what happened in the war. 
So I'm going to model for you um, different parts that I underlined in the in the background paragraph. If you have these underlined, perfect. If you don't, feel free to underline them with me as I'm reading. And we'll just sort of like norm together on what happened in the war. And then we'll read paragraph one and we'll underline, I'll underline some things um, that I found in relation to Jonathan's attitude toward the blessings. Let's get started. In 1967, Nigeria entered a civil war when the country's southeastern territories declared independence, calling themselves the Republic of Biafra. I underline the country's southeastern territories declared independence to know which part of Nigeria declared independence. And then I also underlined Republic of Biafra to know the name of the republic that declared independence. The Biafrans, most of whom belonged to the Igbo ethnic group, said they, were, they broke away from Nigeria because another ethnic group called the Hausa had massacred Igbo in the north. So I underlined Igbo ethnic group to know that that was one of the groups that was in the Civil War. I underlined the Hausa to know that that was the second group in the Civil War. And then I underlined that the Hausa had massacred Igbo in the north to know that like sort of the whole war started because the Igbo in the south in Biafra were fed up that people from their ethnic group were, were massacred by the Hausa in the north. After nearly three years of war, the Biafrans surrendered. I underlined three years of war to remind myself how long the war was, and I underlined Biafran surrendered to remind myself which of the two groups ended up like acquiescing or surrendering first. More than one million people had died in battle or from starvation. Underline more than one million people had died just to keep track of um, the death toll. It's important to know how many people were impacted by the war. Civil peace unfolds in the aftermath of this war. So I underline civil peace is the name of our text and aftermath of this war to know that everything that happens in paragraph one and the rest of the text for that matter happened um, after the war. Okay, so let's read paragraph one and underline um, some things that speak to Jonathan's attitude towards these blessings. It may be a word, it may be a phrase, it may be an illusion, but I'm gonna support you in, in identifying parts of um, his attitude toward these blessings. All right, Jonathan Awigbu counted himself extraordinarily lucky. Happy survival meant so much more to him than just a current fashion of greeting old friends in the first hazy days of peace. So we already know that um, he feels happy and blessed for some reason. Um, so the fact that he survived, he's happy, and he's saying it means so much more to him than just being able to wave to his friends. Um, and we're gonna learn we're gonna learn now like what what it meant to him. But um, the the feeling of happiness is um in my opinion not a feeling that i would expect many people to feel right after a war like eventually you may but it seems like he is feeling happy and that's something that i wanted to note because that speaks to his attitude towards um towards the war in general and what happened after it let's keep going it went deep to his heart okay i'm gonna underline that too deep to his heart because that speaks to like an intense emotion um his happiness of surviving is not just like you know uh, a casual happiness it's actually deep to his core, to his heart. And those kind of emotions are very intense. So we know that this is a very, very intense emotion of gratitude and happiness. Let's keep going. He had come out of the war with five inestimable blessings, his head, his wife Maria's head, and the heads of three out of their four children. Okay, so here we, we, we learn that um, the majority of his family survives, sadly not one of his children, but three out of the four himself and his wife, um, everyone, you know, they all survived the war. He describes the, their survival as inestimable blessings. So that's important to me because I think it speaks to uh, the magnitude of his, of his feelings. So inestimable is too great to count or measure and blessings is obviously something that brings someone happiness. So the fact that he's saying that these blessings are so inestimable, you can't even count them or measure them, does speak to like his attitude um, about what happened after the war. Let's keep going. As a bonus, he also had his old bicycle, a miracle too, but naturally not to be compared to the safety of five human heads. So he used the word bonus and miracle. He's talking about his bike here, which is a material possession um, as being like a bonus miracle, but he does say it's not you know, as significant as the survival of his family. Um, and it shouldn't be compared to that. But I did underline it because um, later on, you remember the significance of the bicycle, but the fact that he's calling this as well um, a miracle too, that's a really positive word to use after something so devastating like war. So it does speak to his general sentiments um, and attitude about the war. 
and about um, just like life after the war in general. Okay, so I'm going to summarize what I just said. I, I sort of capture my thoughts um, in, in a, a bullet point list over here. And um, then you can use this list. You can feel free to, to pause the slide where it is, uh, the video where it is, and then you can actually review my annotations um, to make sure you're making the same annotations in your text and to look at my brainstorm list. So like I said, the question I'm going to support you on is the first part of the question. What is Jonathan's attitude toward these blessings? So as I underlined and as I said um, when, I, when I was underlining things, he's incredibly grateful. He recognizes that family is the most important thing to him and that, that, that they're safe. I also wrote that all human life is more valuable than material possessions because he, he made it very clear that his bicycle, although it was a miracle and although we learned later it was very significant to him, um, is not more valuable than um, the life of his family. So all human life is more valuable than, human, than material possessions. Some human life is more valuable than other human life. It does seem like he's alluding to the fact that his, his family survival is, is, the, is more important than like, other people's survival. Like, I don't think he would ever wish for other people to die, but I think the fact that he mentions greeting his friends as sort of like a, a casual thing, but then talks about his, uh, his survival, the survival of his family as an inestimable blessing, speaks to the, the difference in how he feels about like certain human life over other human life. He very, he very much values um, his family's human life and his own human life more than other people's life. And last but not least, some possessions are very significant and aren't just for material purposes. So even though he does say the bicycle takes a back seat to his family's survival, um, the fact that he called it a miracle and a bonus in the same paragraph when he's talking about his family survival does show that some possessions um, are more significant than, than, than one would think. They sort of transcend the typical, um, the typical material possession. Like we may look at that and read it and be like, bicycle, like, why would that be a miracle? But then we learn later that it was very, very important to him and his family um, and their, their overall well-being. So I think he, he also is, has an attitude that some material possessions do have value, um, especially after something that's so tragic like a war. So like I said before, feel free to pause the video here and then um, you can use this when you're completing the rest of the lesson on your own. So now it's your turn. You can feel free to read the background section again, as well as paragraph one um, to add your own annotations. Maybe you feel like I missed something, feel free to read it again on your own um, and add your own annotations. And then you're gonna use those annotations, my annotations, and what you know about Jonathan as a character to answer the second part of the think question. And just a reminder, the second part of the think question relates to um, what the Jonathan's attitudes toward the blessings shows um, about the nature of the Nigerian Civil War. So not just like shows about how Jonathan feels about the Nigerian Civil War, but also about just the nature of the war in general. So you got to really think critically about that, but use what I, uh, what I went over with you um, to support you in that. And then you also have the talk and write part of the lesson too, so don't forget to complete that. And just a shameless plug that like everything should go on your, on your note catcher if it asks you to put in your note catcher, so your note catcher should be completed by the end of the lesson. So tomorrow's lesson is lucky number 13. I like to think that 13 is lucky. And the learning target is I can identify the use and importance of dialect within a text. We'll go over what dialect is tomorrow, but in short, it's basically like the speech patterns and um, the language of different groups of people. As always, thank you so much for learning with me today. It was a pleasure. A few quick reminders. Number one, don't forget to talk about your lesson with someone. Number two, read 20 minutes and complete a reading log entry. The reading log is at the front of your packet. So make sure you go back to the front of your packet to find the reading log. And number three, practice reading fluency using the first or second page of your weekly reading. So um, if you forgot everything about fluency, that's okay. Go back to the front of your packet. There's directions there and you can use your weekly reading for the fluency work. As always, email your teacher um, if you need any support. You should know their email by now, but in case you don't, um, this is an example um, of how an email would look in the district. It's just the first name, that last name, at DetroitK12.org. Hope everyone has a great day and to remember, keep learning.